The Project Tribute Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to aiding our nation's first responders. Our vision and mission is to enhance the life saving capabilities of our first responders through raising awareness and funding for the life saving work that they do. Our goal with the podcast is to be an educational avenue and a method for our heroes to express themselves. In the podcast, we will discuss various tough subjects. Some of the subjects may be uncomfortable or controversial. Our guests have the right to share their thoughts and ideas and for our listeners to hear the unedited words of our guests. The Foundation's role is to showcase a diverse array of thoughts and opinions within the first responder community. If you hear something that you do not agree with, please consider reaching out to us at projecttributefoundation at gmail.com and join our podcast. If you're a first responder and you would like to share your story, we truly would love to hear from you and learn from your experiences. Please enjoy this week's show, and as always, like, comment, and share to help us grow. You can find more information at www.projecttribute.com. Thanks, and have a great one. All right, so welcome back for part two with... Can I call you Kat? You want to call you Catherine? Can. You can okay. call me Kat. I'm going to call you Kat because it. that's what I've always called you. Okay. Um, so kind of just picking up from the previous 15-minute you know, podcast that we did last week. Or more about yourself before we kind of get into this, or you want to just kind of hop right in? No, let's just hop right in. Okay. Um, so my, you know, my goal with this podcast to start was, to, you know, to normalize mental health. Cause as you know, when we were, you know, when I worked in Lawrence, you were, I think you were there. Um, my Lieutenant yes. committed suicide. Yep. And then I think it was less than a year later, the chief yep. committed suicide. So we knew it was an issue. Yeah. Um, but we were completely underprepared for what that did to everybody. Yeah. Um, and we, I mean, it was a shock to everybody. And then you start looking at numbers. I've looked at numbers for the past and it's the, one of the, the saddest statistics in all first responders. And then we're not alone. It's, you know, EMS, fire, police, military, as, yeah. as we all know, um, dispatchers included. Yes. I, there's no way I could be a dispatcher, nope, by the way. No. Um, but no. more, more first responders kill themselves by suicide than die in the line of duty. And, and we have a historically pretty dangerous job. Yep. So that's a pretty sad statistic yeah um but i just it, it, it for me i this is kind of a therapy for me just to talk about stuff mm -hmm. so um yeah. i think normalizing mental health and especially with what we do yeah i think is important yeah so, I, i'll start there kind of what happened at the time yes you're correct okay Thought i was losing it nope um he had moved to a different station okay. after he got captain okay yeah um so my sort of, I guess the start of where mental health really came to a point for me was medic school. Um, halfway through medic school, it seemed to be all of a sudden looking back, it was not all of a sudden. Right. Um, and I would say, I would assume for a lot of first responders, the mental health crisis does not just have to do with the job. Right. The job just compounds all of it. Right. Um, brings it to light. Yes, very quickly. So regardless of the job I would have had, I would have had some struggles, I'm sure. Um, but this job, just <sighs> the things that we see that are not normal, um, the feelings that you start having that you've never had before because you're like, what is going on? Just bring a lot of those struggles to light very quickly um, and almost too quickly, I feel like, to be able to manage. And when you've had no training on how to manage your emotions and how to manage hard feelings and have hard conversations um, and you're in a culture where those things are kind of taboo then it's just a recipe for a disaster i do have a question for you yeah so when you started how did, where did you start volunteer no i just went to medic school started at amr and then lawrence four months later did you say you started with a like a rural no rural no, just okay. AMR and Independence, okay. Missouri. So did you, did you ever get any sort of, of like mental health talk or anything when you started? Um, I did. When I was in school at Johnson County, I got, um, he's a nurse. He used to be at Lawrence also, I believe. He came and talked to us about, and honestly, I have a pretty bad memory. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly what he talked about, but sure. I do distinctly remember him talking about the job being hard and a difficult call. Um, and what, which is fairly typical kind yeah. of, yeah, what to do, which so I appreciated that, but 
I, you know, halfway through medic school, um, and I'm right out of high school, pretty much halfway through medic school, I'm just like suicidal all of a sudden, like kind of hits me out of nowhere. Again, right in the middle of I say school. nowhere. Yes. During clinicals, which is not a, no, 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 <laughs> this is not a, a good, stressful this, time. This is not yeah. a good recipe. Um, and you know, ignored it. And, and the, I remember telling myself like this problem isn't just magically going to go away when you get out of medic school, but that's just what I kept telling myself is that yeah. maybe it would to get through medic school because medic school sucks for anyone who's been through it. Um, it's not fun. No. And so kind of back to your Lieutenant, you know, that's, I graduate December, 2016. Um, been passively suicidal for, you know, six months. Um, and you, you knew like, you were aware that, that you were at that point. Yeah. And it, well, it is funny because for a long time, if someone had said, you must be depressed also, I would have been like, I'm not depressed. I just want to kill myself. <laughs> I really, really was like, no, those two things are very different. Yeah. yeah. Um, which now knowing what I know, in, in I'm like, very, wow. Very, very weird ways. Yeah. Um, so I knew something was wrong, but I sure as heck wasn't going to say anything. And I just had to make it through medic school. But you're a lieutenant you know, taking his own life. So that's, I mean, we were in the academy, so it was April or May. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know, I didn't know where you were at when that yeah. happened. I didn't know in what yep. stage. Yeah. We were in the fire academy and he specifically was someone that really pushed me to apply in Lawrence. Well, he was awesome. Yes. I mean, it, that, that was devastating in so many ways. Yeah. He is a good guy. Um, and I remember him and one of my other captains, cause I did my write outs, my internship in Lawrence and he was at that station where I did my internship. Um, so him and then one of my other captains, just like every day, once we got to know each other, they're like, you're going to apply at Lawrence, you're going to apply at Lawrence. And I was like, no, I'm not going to apply at Lawrence. No, I'm not going to apply at Lawrence. Um, so that was hard too, just cause he, he pushed was you so there. kind yeah. and so nice. And I mean, everyone knew him better than I did, but um, I have a distinct memory of us doing the, we were doing air squats for like the fitness, the oh. peer fitness. Um, was he, did he, did he run your academy? No, but okay. when I was in the internship, they were doing like the trophy, you know, oh, with yeah. the peer fitness stuff. Oh, yeah. And I remember distinctly he and I doing air squats next to each other in the, yeah. in the gym. And I was like, he was super he, tall. He so probably I could keep kicked up. your ass too. Well, yeah. I don't know. Cause he was really tall. He had farther to go. Oh, I guess that's true. Anyway, so that was just a uh, point. And then I go to a department and I have a captain kill himself. And I'm like, what? In the midst of all the stress of medic school and, and running the calls that we do. and Yeah. Um, and our, you know, you know, people don't know how to respond to that. So yeah. they tried, um, but the response to that wasn't super great could have been better um and so that just kind of set i do feel like our academy a lot just happened <laughs> with our my academy class at lawrence um and then yeah a year later our chief you know takes his life so um those that combined vision what other people were dealing with but just like trying to balance like okay we've had two years kill ourselves kill themselves <clears throat> what do we, what do we do from here and what's the appropriate response moving forward right well and i've i've talked about it a little bit before too but um you know the the peer support team started after yeah um the first and because we just realized that you know as you said i mean we had no idea what to do mm -hmm. it, it had never happened in that department that we were aware of anyway and you know we knew it happened um but you know, we, and you I'll never have to deal with that, but, and it, it, and it rocked everybody and nobody was prepared for it. Yeah. It's one of those things. That's I, that's why I, I constantly say, I wish that mental health wasn't looked at the way that it is just as a whole, not yeah. even a culture. Yeah. Um, just so that, I don't know, you, you have to wonder if it would have changed anything, but maybe not. Yeah. That's not something you can really, you can't sit and look back and try to figure out anything it's just not gonna help anything but um like i said this is the reason i do this podcast is just yeah. to make it normal and and but yeah we were so unprepared yeah and we were actually right 
we, we had already talked to our chief to get approval because, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that peer support team. Yeah. There's a lot of logistics. There's money. You know, mm-hmm. you have to get the, the people involved training. And and we had actually just presented like a formal presentation to him with all of the numbers and all the statistics and everything. And he was on board. And so that's what shocked us all after he did. He, you know, he killed himself was mm-hmm. that like, it's like, hey, man. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> We just we just talked to you about this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, but and that that was really a kick in the that was a kick in the nuts yeah. for all of us because yeah. we we were like it, it does and it doesn't matter who was the team chief. It could yeah. be a, a the chief of the department. It could mm-hmm. be the brand new guy. It could be a twenty five year veteran of the department. It doesn't matter who they are. Mm-hmm. It it you know it yeah it doesn't matter. We'll talk to whoever needs to be you know helped out in any way, shape or form. Yeah. And the the thing though, cause even when you say that my initial reaction is like, it does matter. It's a culture. Yes. Yeah. Like I know that it's not supposed to matter. Logically it shouldn't matter, but like, <clears throat> um, I don't even know quite how you go about shifting that other than talking about it. So I'm talking about it, but I'm no chief and I'm no high ranking person, but like. Well, and confidentiality. It, our yes, biggest, our yes, biggest hurdle for with, sure. with peer support was that, so let's say somebody's having an issue like, you know, yeah. drinking or, or drugs or whatever. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a confidential conversation right. between me and that person. Right. 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 But we, we determine, you know, with myself, them, and maybe a, a some sort of therapist or outside agency mm-hmm. that kind of help us determine a few things that they're not fit for duty. So who do we go to and what do we tell them? Because it's right. confidential. Yeah. Right. So that was one of our biggest hurdles with mm-hmm. starting that peer support team was saying, basically, hey, we're going to come. One of the peer support team members is going to come to you mm-hmm. and we're going to say this person needs off. We're not going to tell you why. You can't ask why. Yeah. And you need to give them that time off. Yeah. And that's kind of how I'm glad it worked out because that's I think that was that would be a defining moment if that was not able to be. Right. Because. I mean, we're scared for our jobs anyway. I mean, you mess yeah. up one time yeah. and it's caught on camera or documented wrong, right. your job's, you know, yeah. on the line. So yeah. it's, yeah. Okay, you can continue now. I don't know what I was going to say anymore. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. I told you, you got you to the... rein me in. Well, the, wondered a lot. How do you really go about changing it and I know kind of the obvious answers but even like getting taken off duty to go get you know cleared for duty it's like how many people if they were honest just about what was going on in their heads right then you know in that moment in any department would meet the criteria (laughs) to be taken off duty (laughs) 99.9 percent exactly so I think what what feels hard and sort of like a double standard is like when once you're finally honest about something and open about something you're the one that gets taken off what are the repercussions yeah Yeah. and you're the one that has to you know take time off work maybe take your own time off work um which i get but kind of changing that i guess narrative somehow again i don't have the answers of how but to where it's like you're not you don't feel like you're getting punished for being honest because like i said if everyone was being honest about what was going on in their heads i think you wouldn't have a fire department or an ems department or whatever when you haven't even spoken about the just people looking at you differently if you have a mental health issue yes right i mean you're you're it's hard not to feel like you're being judged yeah for sure um so do you you care where i go no okay this is your show Oh, I say that. So you're in the academy when this happened. Mm-hmm. Like right in the middle of it, were you guys almost done? Were you? You know, I, I've. I mean, I don't remember blur, when he did. But... I just remember we were doing writ training, which is <clears throat> rapid. You... Uh, uh, rapid intervention team. Thank you. I'm not a firefighter anymore. <laughs> um, we, yeah, we were doing writ training. So how did you guys find out? Uh, one of the other captains. We were kind of on a break anyway, but called us all to kind of sit down on the lawn in front of the station and said, hey, I don't remember what he said, but just remember he told us what happened. And um, 
another thing I wrestle with in just everyday life, not even as a first responder, is like how much should I care? And some of that has to do with like internal boundaries right. that I, I mean, was never taught. Suicide's a pretty set. controversial topic. I mean, it's <laughs> well, but like I was upset, but how much can I be upset? Because I didn't really know him. Everyone else on this department knew him more. Um, but I didn't know, and I still have a hard time now, but especially, gosh, I was like 20. I was just so young. I didn't know how to be like, oh, that's really sad, but like I can be sad, but I can also move yeah. on with my life. When you had a much different experience than I did, because I was already on the department and worked with them for quite yeah. a while. Right. And you were just starting in this career. So yes. it's like, I mean, did the thought ever cross your, like, do I want to do this? Did that ever cross your mind after you were told that? Not really. No, it was more so just like, man, like he pushed me to apply yeah. here and now he's gone. And I was really looking forward to working with him. Well, I've talked about this a lot in the other podcasts, but we get practice every day on how to fake our emotions because we can't, I can't bring mm -hmm. in my emotions to any of these calls that I run. I got to yeah. be able to do my job. Yep. And, you know, even if I have already had the shittiest day I've had in a long time, yeah. I've got to put on a smile yep, and, you do. and do my job. And yeah. On my... We're very good at, at pretending. Yes, for I'm, sure. I'm fine as a very good... It's a very common term that we yeah. hear a lot with first responders. Yeah, I'm good. Fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, I'm in therapy. It to be a maintenance yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And That's I'm not the saying therapy is like the magic answer, you know, for everyone. Um, but I do think everyone should like try it at some point in their life. The thing is you have, you know, crappy first responders. You have crappy therapists. You have crappy doctors. You don't... So that sucks if you have a bad one. But um, right now, I feel like what I'm talking about with mine is just, is that. So like, how do you turn it on and off? Because it, it they can't switch. tell you. Well, yeah, you can't feel all the feelings. Mm -hmm. Like you, can't, I can't do my job if I'm doing that. Right. I have to shut them all down. Um, and she's like, yeah, you have to. Like she gets that. You can't. Yeah, feel all the things. Does your therapist um, deal with first responders or just? Uh, she, yes, she, everybody, but okay. she's familiar okay. with first responders, which is a plus. Yeah. Not yeah. a not a necessity, but for me, that's been really I mean, helpful. It, it helps if they can at least sympathize a little yes. bit more yeah. and understand where we're coming from. I mean, yeah, I, I can only assume we go to some of the therapists that really haven't, <laughs> that don't know a lot about what we do. Yeah, like, like real. Uh huh like some of the le legitimate stuff that we see constantly. Yeah. I I don't even know how they would be able to like, they'd be like, oh, I I, I understand now. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So it's nice to have somebody that gets that. Yes. So. And so we kind of, I feel like touch on a lot, just, okay, so you have to shut it down, not telling you not to. You have to just kind of pretend like everything's fine, do your job. Um, how do you come out of that? when you get off shift because you cannot live like that. And I've spent years living like that. So I am always on. And again, it's not just because of my job, but my job does not help. Right. Um, so I am always like, all right, who's going to die? What car is going to wreck? You know, I don't know. If, so you're like anticipating. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know if everybody does that. Um, I don't know if they do it to the, the level I do it. I'm sure some people don't. I see a lot of don't. people like, driving a crotch rocket crazy down the street. And oh, like, oh, yeah. There's our next patient. For sure. Yeah. But yeah. So trying to like not do that off shift, except it is so hard. And that's. Once you know what we do, <laughs> it, it's hard not to like, I can't, wa I can't watch any, any fire uh -huh. oh, yeah. you know, drama shows, so any stupid. EMS. House is one of my favorites. <laughs> I know. It's, um, but like, even if we watch a movie that's got like some medical like if they're intubating somebody, I'm like, that's not how you do that. Yeah, that's not shocking, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just, just so everybody's aware. Yeah, <laughs> flatline asystole. We don't shock. We that's we don't shock that. Mm -hmm. That's not. That's a. Cannot. That's shock a Hollywood it. deal. Uh huh. I mean, you can. It's not gonna do anything. But well, yeah, you'll get in you trouble. Can, you can shock you it as many times it. as you want, <laughs> but it's not gonna. Do, it's not gonna change the outcome. So. Yes. Um. That's funny. Yeah. So. I'm very judgmental when I. When I Oh, yeah. My wife hates it. Yeah, it's valid. But so a year after that, yeah, I mean, then our chief goes. Um, and I've spent a good probably two years just being passively suicidal. So when I say passively suicidal, too, you know, I don't know what people know, but um, not really 
like not having a plan, not really having, well, I did have a means actually at one point and I got rid of that. Um, I had a gun and so I got rid of that, but, um, never having a plan. It was just sort of a constant, like, honestly, every minute, you know, I'm on shift, I'm doing the firefighting, I'm doing the paramedic and every minute of every day, I'm like, man, you should just, you should just go like, it'd probably be. So when you say you were passively suicide, does that mean like you were just like, I would be okay with not being here anymore? Yeah. So just like thinking saying? about it all the time yeah. again, like never, I mean, there were times when I was like, Oh, I guess I could do that if I wanted to actually kill myself. And then I was like, I oh, no, you know, I'd kind of be like, eh, I'm not going to do that. But I would go throughout my, my day just being like, what do you think? An answer as you feel, as you yeah. feel necessary. Yeah. What do you think stopped you from not taking that next step? Hmm. I mean, well, like, was it, you know, did you have a good, you know, family, friends? Did you have a good, I mean, it, yeah. I know you're a very strong person just from knowing you, but yeah. I was there something that you think had a major role in you not following through with any of that ever? Friends, 100%. So friends. support system. Yes. Did you tell um, people that eventually were, okay. when I was in the thick of it, the people who found out were my crew. Um, and I'm not, we just kind of talked about it. So I'm not going to get, super into it sure, but sure. i will say that like the reason that came out is because i was just so angry at work for like a tour which is three of our work days just pissed angry because i go home every day and i was living alone which one of my sisters was like that sounds like a horrible idea and she didn't even know what was going on but, she, but i'm an extrovert in the house that you bought for me no no oh. no this was a little house on okay. main street yeah um and she's like, I don't know. Sounds like a horrible thing for you to live alone. And I was like, it'll be great. Um, so, you know, I was just so angry is the best way to put it because I'm on edge and I'm suicidal all the time. And so someone on my crew finally was like, dude, like, what is wrong with you? And I don't think he was expecting me to be like, sure, I want to die. <laughs> I know he wasn't, but just him noticing. And when we talk about peer support, that's a big thing too. Um, and total side tangent. But like, I would... A lot of people would say, you know, we need people to be comfortable coming up to us. I personally would argue that and say, no, you need to be comfortable going up to people like my, so you got called out. Yes. Essentially. You need to be comfortable yes. going up to people and saying, hey, are you doing OK? Are you feeling suicidal? Because the last thing I want to do when I'm feeling suicidal is go up to someone and be right. like, hi. You probably don't, I mean, you barely have the motivation to get out of bed, let yes. alone go talk about your problems. Yeah. With somebody. So I'm like, no, people on the peer support team need to learn how to ask hard questions. And that is part of our training. Yes. Is to recognize, you know, somebody's acting different. Yeah. You know, we're going to say something to you. Yeah. Whether you tell us is, is up to you. We For can't sure. force anybody to say anything, yeah. but at least they know that door is open now. Yeah. So, yeah. That's um, awesome. so that, you know, my crew, um, did have a lot to do with that. Um, and me getting rid of my gun, that was them. Um, and, uh, had the peer support team been established on the department at this point? No. And, and later on when I had more issues, they had been, but we unfortunately didn't go that route and that created, that created issues. Um, so had I gone the peer support route, I don't know how it would have gone. I think it would have been beneficial. Um, but I was already kind of established with other people on the department right. who weren't. And there's really no, peer there's no, there's no right or know? wrong way to do it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, either it's way, just a, one of the resources that you have available. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, so where did I just come from? Uh, your career would basically. Oh, you asked what kind of kept me from oh yeah from yeah, doing yeah. yeah so my crew my friends um i have have still am at this amazing church with a great community um and again like nobody knew and maybe that's something else i would like just to put out there and for people to take away from any story is like you don't know what is going on with other people Correct. you don't know what's going on in their heads unless they tell you, and if they're being honest, you know, that's a whole nother question. So like, you just literally never know. So how you treat people, how you interact with people matters. Cause nobody in my church knew that every day, every hour, every minute, I wanted to kill myself, but they were just their authentic selves. They were nice. They were kind. They let me be whoever I yep. was, you know, if I was not super talkative, no one, 
yeah. it, there's a balance, but no one was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? You know, it was just like, hey, she's not feeling it today. That's fine. Not a big deal. She's just a person. We all have days where we're not feeling it, you know? So. I think one of the, I don't like to use the word like funniest, hmm. but I mean, we we're taught this in, especially in medical school. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I talk about it with my students in EMT school, but, you know, we run a lot of calls that aren't what I would say necessarily an emergency. Yes. Right. Yeah. Would you agree? With yes, that? I okay. would agree. <laughs> um, doesn't mean that they don't need help in some way. Yeah. But right. But maybe an ambulance ride isn't the best or most appropriate, especially yes. when we're as busy as we are. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that tangent yeah. at the moment. Um, but we're taught to, you know, it doesn't, it, we have to be very non judgmental, right? Because regardless of what mm -hmm. situation they might be in, you know, we go into houses that are what I would call not livable, yeah. right? Yeah. And ordinary Joe Blue off the street is like, oh, they're just, you know, living off of the, you know, government checks and, you know, they just don't care about anything. Well, that's probably not the case. There's probably yeah. a lot of things that led to that situation that they're in, yes. a lot of which were probably out of their control. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we've got a lot of meth users and, and everything else that mm -hmm. you can throw in there. Um, yeah. And we know this. Yeah. Because you knew, you knew the steps that you should have taken, right? Yeah. More than likely. I mean, you probably weren't in the moment. It's kind of hard to be like ment mentally prepared and capable to take that step but right. you at least knew i probably should talk to somebody yeah. or you know something's wrong right because you treat your patients the same way yes but then you don't treat yourself the same way that yes. we're taught to treat our patients for sure so yeah i i it's definitely one of those things that i think needs to be addressed mm -hmm. that we, we're all aware we mm -hmm. know what's going on yeah and lieutenant captain yeah probably knew the same thing yeah. right but mm -hmm. whatever got yeah. him to that point and yeah and those calls also, I feel like that's another place where I cannot count the amount of times <laughs> where we left uh, a suicidal patient or um, a self-harm call or anything where the person sitting next to me made, I don't know if you want this out there on the podcast, but whatever, yeah. um, edit right. it out if you need to, um, just made comments about like, man, like, you know, they should have done this and they would have been successful. I, I, um, I can tell you what you're talking about. So a lot of people, you know, and this is a Hollywood thing too, right? Mm -hmm. To commit suicide, you slit your wrist. Yes. Well, there's a right and a wrong way to do it. Yes. And so yep. going one way yep. will be um, the most appropriate and effective way to do that. Mm -hmm. Going the other way, we would say it's just attention. Yes. Right? Yep. So you know you're speaking of. Yes. <laughs> so you can be real. But there are. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, I don't. There are other not just that that's the most common where yeah. people are like oh man you should have gone the other way you know yeah. and we're gone we've yeah. left we don't call. say that to the patient yes, yes. <laughs> no, at least i hope thank not. god you do, should not be a no. patient care provider. no you should um pills you know we'll have people take pills that are not damaging yeah. and so we leave and they're like well if they really wanted to kill themselves then they should have got a hold of something else yeah so i will just say i've you know sat next to people who made those comments as someone who was suicidal for a very long time hearing people at the same time we have a you know peer support team trying to kind of get things rolling um and i'm going to assume everyone in every department experiences this so you're trying to get mental health you know more talked about yeah. and yet the person sitting next to you or the person back at the station is like oh man they weren't successful like we should tell them how to actually do it or you know maybe you should give them some some real pills that'll actually actually help them out and i'm like damn <laughs> Okay. And we do have a little bit of dark humor that helps us deal yes. with stuff. But there's a yeah. there's a fine line there, right? For sure. I mean, especially and and you you have a skill just just from your background, just from what you've talked about here today. Mm -hmm. You've got a different skill set than a lot of different first responders have. I mean, mm -hmm. you can empathize. I yeah. mean, we talk about empathy versus sympathy. Mm -hmm. I can sympathize that you can you can truly empathize with some of these people that are in that situation. So yeah. I think you're your outlook on that and your advice is, um, you know, going to help more people than 
I hope so. It's a way this, that hasn't been in that situation before. So Yeah. And I'll say a lot of those things aren't, in my opinion, uh, attention seeking. Seeking. So some people are like, mm -hmm. again, it's not, a, I'm not going to be, for a lot of people. yeah, I'm not going to be naive about it and be like, oh, that's not what people are doing. Um, <laughs> but there are a lot of those specifically with self-harm where it's like, they're not seeking attention. They're coping. Yeah. They are, they are coping. They're trying to feel something actually. And it's a release. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they almost get, I wouldn't say satisfaction from it, but it's a, they feel better. Yes. After doing that. Yeah. hundred percent. And they're, they're not the ones that usually call. It's usually their friend that yes. sees it or mom, dad, yeah. whatever. Which so, is valid. Yeah. Again. I mean, you should call. Yes. You know, there's a problem there. Yeah, for sure. Um, but we also shouldn't leave those patients either. But there's only so much we can do. That's but we know that if they say they're <laughs> suicidal, they're going one way or the other, whether it's with us or with PD or whatever. So depends on the service. Should be. Yeah. <laughs> should be a legal issue at that point. Yeah. yeah. But um, here nor there. Anyway, yes. So, yeah, Lord, me from from going further and then getting rid of the means. And there are just some basic things that are out there that I you don't have to look hard to find, you know. And it will say, yeah, does do they have a means of killing themselves? This mm -hmm. is for anyone. Do they have a means of killing themselves? Well, like, then you need to remove, remove them that. from the means or remove the means from them. Um, so I would say yes, do that. <laughs> um, and uh yeah well and and i don't know if this is something we talked about in in uh school but i know it's kind of brushed on a paramedic school so somebody is you you determine somebody's suicidal right and they've told you at that point nothing you say is going to make them feel uncomfortable about talking about it especially if they're willing to say yes i'm suicidal yes. for the most part right yes um that was a shock to me because of the of the mental health culture mm -hmm. as a whole right i mean yeah. it's like well, we don't want to talk about that you yeah. know it's an uncomfortable situation and i before before i really knew a lot of a lot about mental health i thought that if i brought it up and talked yes. about it it was going to make it worse yeah like it was going to push them over the edge you know yeah. if they were talking about it but that is definitely not the case i mean mm -hmm. i don't know personally but it you know we're taught that you need to get those questions out there and more than likely they're going to answer mm -hmm. your questions yeah. so you're going to ask them are you suicidal? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a plan? Yes. Right. Okay. What's your plan? And they mm -hmm. tell you, okay, where is this? Where is yeah. this? I mean, I, I've had patients that I've asked them this and they yeah. said, mm -hmm. I've got a time, I've got a day, I've got it planned out to, I mean, they, they, they go through every single mm -hmm. step in their mind and they've probably been steps yeah. to talking, yes. communication, mm -hmm. calling, especially us as first responders, calling each other out, yeah. you know, in an inappropriate way, yeah. you know, Home aside, maybe. Don't be <laughs> like, yes. The hell's wrong with you today? Yeah. It's probably not the best way to do it. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, I mean, just keeping each other accountable. Yeah. I mean, knowing what we deal with. And we have knowledge in these things. That's what that's what blows my mind is that mm. we, we know these things. Yes, we do. I mean, we know that that even though I didn't have that talk, you know, you need to look out for yourself, for your, yeah. your crewmates, whatever. Yeah. I still knew yeah. that the things that, I'm going to see that there's no way that they couldn't mess with me a little bit. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So like you said, statistically, um, asking someone about suicide does not make them any more suicidal than yeah. they already are, even if they've never said anything about it. This podcast is hosted by the Project Tribute Foundation. We are a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to aiding our first responders. Thank you for listening. For more information on our efforts, check us out at www.projecttribute.com. If you're a first responder that would like to share your story, contact us at projecttributefoundation at gmail.com. You can find us on various social media and podcast sites by searching the Project Tribute Foundation. 100% of donations are used to save lives while our retail store pays for any of our operational costs. Thank you again, and please be sure to like us, follow us, and share our foundation with your friends. Thank you and have a great day.